T-shirts were here? Yeah. In the western city of Lviv, the U.S. acting ambassador, Kristina Kavin, returned to Ukraine for the first time since evacuating six weeks ago. Oh, did you see this one? She went shopping, and her press attaché bought a T-shirt with Ukrainian soldiers' message to the invaders early in the war. Russian warship, go yourself. I mean, the Ukrainians uh, basically saying, no, we're not going to back down just because you're aiming your guns at us. You know, we're going to stand up for our country. We're going to stand up for uh, the sovereignty of our nation. And you can go do something else if you don't like that. Afterward, we sat down in Lviv's Market Square. You were last here in Ukraine on February 22nd. Why have you returned today? Well, uh, my security professionals have uh, determined that it's safe to come, and we wanted to come as soon as we could, and so I'm back here today. And what we very much hope is that it's signaling a return first to Lviv, but then ultimately to Kyiv. Uh, so we're working hard to get there and hope to do that by the end of the month. Let's talk about arms support and weapons going into Ukraine. Uh, the U.S., of course, has been sending artillery that's crucial for the fight in eastern Ukraine. Do you know if that artillery has arrived in eastern Ukraine so that the Ukrainians can use it against Russians in that territory? Right. So uh, we did recently uh, say that we would provide howitzers, and over half of those have already reached Ukraine. Uh, I don't know where each individual one is located in the country, but I know that they're headed where they're needed. And uh, we got them here as quickly as possible so that Ukraine could defend itself against Russia's attacks in the east. The U.S. is refusing to provide Ukraine some longer range artillery that the Ukrainians have requested. Why is that? I don't think that we put any, any sort of cap or limit on the range of our systems. Uh, I think we've just been providing what we can quickly that, can, they, that the Ukrainians could be trained on quickly because, of course, if they can't use the equipment, it's not as useful. How does the U.S. define victory in this war? Ultimately, it's up for Ukraine to define victory, but obviously a, uh, a, an independent Ukraine with its own government, the same government that's in power now, and peace. Uh, and we'll let Ukraine determine exactly what that victory looks like because we don't want to presuppose for them uh, any discussions they may be having. The British government has started talking publicly about victory, including Ukraine, evicting Russia from all of Ukraine. That includes eastern Donbass, where the Russians have occupied since 2014. Does the U.S. agree with that? Crimea and Donbass are Ukraine. And uh, if Ukraine chooses to uh, uh, defend its own territory, uh, I don't think that we would uh, have something negative to say about that. With all due respect, it sounds like there is no definition of victory that the U.S. government's willing to make. Well, we don't want to impose upon Ukraine what the victory is. They, it's really up to Ukrainians to decide if and when they want to make any sort of concession to Russia, and uh, we leave it to them to lay those guidelines out. Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi, of course, yesterday used the word victory, but also Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin said the U.S. goal is to weaken Russia's ability to wage war. Is that a sign the U.S. aims are expanding? Well, I would say that uh, Russia has clearly shown itself to be a very bad global actor. So while they're, what they're doing in Ukraine is, is horrible, horrific, uh, they obviously have other countries that they border. Therefore, uh, given the incredibly irresponsible behavior of President Putin, I think it's, uh, it's, it's a pretty, um, uh, let's say it's it, the, the idea that he can't do this to other countries and his border countries is certainly a valid one. And uh, a, weakened, uh, a weakened Russia would have a harder time of doing that in other border areas. And when you say weakened Russia, is that, as Secretary Blinken has said, strategic defeat long term, uh, including sanctions, including export controls, and or military defeat on the battlefield that would actually set Russia's military back multiple years? Well, first of all, I would say we want Ukraine to win. And to win, they need to defeat Russia. So yes, I would say that there is a military component to that. But frankly, uh, I don't see us removing sanctions or helping Russia out economically uh, if it is not behaving uh, as a good global actor. So if they want to be another North Korea, another Iran, uh, you know, another Syria that is completely isolated in the world where no one will trade, then, you know, they've chosen that path. And as long as they continue to act in the irresponsible way they've been acting, uh, they're not going to be able to come back from that. It's not going to be business as usual. 
Increasingly, Moscow is saying that because of more heavy U.S. weapons coming to Ukraine, that this is more of a proxy fight between Russia and the U.S., is it? No, it's, it's a fight between Russia, who attacked Ukraine, and Ukraine. We're helping Ukraine, but it's Ukraine's fight, and Ukraine's fighting it very well. If Russia considers this a proxy fight, as it's publicly saying, are you worried about escalation? Because Moscow has said it would rather escalate than lose. You know, uh, President Putin likes to throw out a lot of bluster and a lot of threats. And we can't choose our policy or decide our policy based on his threats. We have to base it on what the situation is and our commitment to help Ukraine win this fight. So that sounds like um, no matter what kind of threats come out of Moscow, the U.S. will stay the course. Yes. Okay. And then lastly, as we said, this is your first visit to Lviv in two months. Some of your European counterparts have already returned to Kyiv. Why not return to Kyiv? When they tell me it's safe to go back and bring my people back, I'll do it. Uh, obviously, we're here, so we have made a certain determination that we can safely travel here. As soon as they tell me we can go back to Kyiv, we'll be there, because we are very eager to go back. Christina Kavin, thank you very much. Good. Well, it's good to see you. Thank you. And a note, our coverage of the war in Ukraine is supported in partnership with the Pulitzer Center.